Hey there, uh, I'm just going to be talking about how to make uh, digital logos for you guys. Um, the method I'm using, uh, it's one that I found really effective uh, when I was working last year for Science Orientation uh, 2011. Um, and I'm sure there are more effective and efficient ways, uh, especially if you know how to use a tablet or if you, know, if you work in some sort of art um, industry. But I don't know how to use a tablet, and I'm not an artist. And this method, uh, I think the advantage of this method is it allows you to hand draw your logos, which is something that I prefer and a lot of people prefer. So, you know, feel free to use this method. Um, I'm just posting this video for future chords or uh, people who want to make their own logos and uh, digitize them. Um, so, I'm also going to be drawing in pen and marker. Uh, I'm just going to show you guys. Oops, sorry. I'm just going to show you guys uh, how the two differ, uh, differ from each other, how they contrast when you see them in the, your final product. Uh, so I guess we can start uh, just by drawing you know, whatever we want. Okay, so I'm just going to start by drawing the uh, 2011 orientation logo. Uh, so first I drew the globe, and what I also ended up doing was drawing the, uh, I guess, these arrow things separately uh, and then what I ended up doing was um, on the computer place them where it's most ideal now to contrast this this was marker you know to contrast this with pen let's give with pen because it's finer you can give it a lot you can give your logos a lot more detail uh, so let's go with um, let's draw a robot with a lot of things coming out of it so we'll draw its its optical sensor, I guess, um, and have its wires coming out of it. Probably want to use a ruler for most of these, but I'm just doing it by freehand. And this is by no means organized. I'm just, I just want to show you guys uh, how detailed you guys can get when you guys draw your logos. We'll just leave it at that. And what you do next is. Uh, you scan you scan this uh, so we're going to be using uh, Adobe Photoshop um, this is CS5 but anyway uh, you want to go get your image um, so you open your image here so you scanned your image um, this is the one with marker this is the one with pen um, if you want to zoom in uh, so let's get started let's uh, let's make these each uh, their own separate layer um, I'm just gonna copy and paste, cut and paste so we got one here, oh, let's get rid of that yellow background actually no we need that uh, let's make this one its own layer alright so we got our own respective layers, let's get rid of this yellow background so we have each of them in their own layer uh, this will be a robot, we'll name this robot and we'll name this planet. Uh, this is actually done in pen. This is planet done in marker. So let's work with the uh, let's work with the marker first. Uh, what we want to do is we want to go to image, adjustments, and then brightness and contrast. You're going to want to play with this for a bit. Uh, it, it really depends. It's different from picture to picture. Different from image to image. Um, so you just got to play with these uh, adjustments, see what you like best. What I like to do is go all the way down, uh, make it as dark as possible so that these uh, black marks stand out. These, uh, yeah, these black lines stand out. And you want to increase the contrast um, to about maximum. You know, you could always uh, play with it and, you know, have it less. Um, it really doesn't matter. Um, something I also want to mention too is uh, it's probably best to work in black and white. I should have done that in the beginning. Uh, so what we can do is uh, we can go to uh, desaturate. You know, it's going to make everything black and white. But you don't have to do that. Uh, brightness and contrast will do that for you. Um, then what you want to do is you know you just want to play with it. Uh, let's delete these white spaces. Um, let's make this its own group. So uh, planet then marker. Let's drag this in there. So we're going to make each of these, uh, I guess, um, each of these uh, orbits, I guess. I don't know what you want to call them. Uh, we'll, make, 
each of them their own layer. That way we can individually move them to our liking. So let's move it here. Um, let's get this one. Oh, it's going to be tight. All right. Yeah, you'll probably encounter that a lot. Make sure you uh, highlight your layer. Um, and then wrap around this one. All right. So we can now we can each we can move each of these individually as much as we want, which is very convenient. This is what I find very convenient. So uh, what I just did was I pressed Control T, and this allows you to move it and slightly rotate it to the way you want it. Um, this is good. I'll leave it like that. Uh, let's get the second one. Um, let's rotate this a bit more. Uh, maybe, I don't know, just like that. Sure, why not? Um, let's get rid of this line. Okay, and let's get the third layer adjusted to the way we want it. Okay, like that. Uh, this is just an example. You know, it's obviously not perfect, but you, you get the idea. You just adjust the image the way you want it, and um, you know, it's very convenient to move uh, parts, bits and parts around if you don't like it. If you want to adjust things. Um, so what we do here, from uh, if we want to digitize it, what we want to do is let's let's isolate the layer. Let's get rid of the robot and let's save this. Um, what we can do is save as, save as, uh, we could save it as a PSD, or what you could do is save it as a JPEG. Uh, let's call it Planet Marker. Um, yeah, just save it as maximum quality. That's what I usually do. Okay, and let's go to the pen. Let's go to the robot guy. Uh, all right, so what we want to do is, um, again, let's desaturate this guy. Uh, desaturate, make it black and white, um, and then what we want to do is adjust the color. So let's go brightness dark, um, contrast up. You can see, you can probably already notice, uh, hold on, let me just zoom in here, um, that uh, I kind of smudged it a bit uh, when I hand drew it, so that when I do decrease the darkness, you can see like the gray uh, areas areas uh, all around you know wherever there's pretty uh, where the lines are pretty close to each other uh, so if you want to prevent that from happening you know increase the brightness a little bit don't go all the way dark um, adjust like I said you just got to play with it you know find a, find a setting that you really like increase the contrast so that it, it really the lines really stand out um, so okay so that's good let's get our magic marker t uh, magic wand tool uh, let's delete all the whites um, and you're probably gonna have to go in and uh, you know highlight all these whites. Just get rid of them. Uh, you don't have to do this, but uh, I like to do it um, just so that you know I can just work with the black. Uh, again, if you want to try, you can try brightness and contrast again. You know, just so that it really stands out. Um, you can see that the gray is gone from the uh, middle area and what you're left with is just the black. So the magic wand tool will be your best friend getting rid of the white um, as much as you want. Um, so there's there's our little image. Um, and let's save this guy, save as. Uh, let's see, JPEG. Uh, let's call this guy robot pen. Um, uh, so that's that. And what we're gonna move on to is, is uh, turning these into vector images. And what I mean by that is, if you zoom in very closely on any image, you'll see that there are these um, pixels, right? Uh, T-shirt companies, they don't like these pixels. What they actually do is they charge you extra to turn these pixels into nice, smooth lines, what we call uh, vector image files. Um, that's going to cost you extra, and, you know, uh, with science orientation already on a tight budget, oh, I assume so, uh, you don't want to spend the extra money. So this is how I'll prevent... This is how, what I'll show you is how to prevent uh, these jagged lines from forming, these jagged pixels from forming, and instead replace these with smooth lines. So what you need is, um, you can probably find some other uh, free program on the internet. What I like to use is Adobe Illustrator. 
Um, if you have the uh, Adobe Photoshop suite or the CS CS5 suite, uh, it comes with it. Um, but anyway, I'm going to be using Illustrator. I'm sure there are other programs out there. Um, just, all right, so what I want to do is uh, we want to go open uh, our JPEGs that we saved. Um, this and this robot pen and planet marker, like I said. There we go. So we got our we got our JPEGs and. Again, if you'll notice, jagged lines, jagged pixels. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to. Okay, let's let's move this more into the center here. Um, so what you want to do is you want to change this into a vector image file. So what you want to do is you want to go to Object, and uh, where is it? Live Trace, and then what you want to go is Make and Expand. Um, tracing may proceed slowly. What tracing is is uh, tracing. Uh, picks up those jagged pixels and smooths them out. So the computer will do it for you. It's very convenient um, and very relatively fast. Um, most of the time, people will anchor uh, anchor the uh, pixels manually using this anchor tool. It takes very long time, but it's much more accurate. But for the sake of time, you know, I'm sure as a media coordinator or any kind of coordinator, you will not have that uh, convenience. So this is a very convenient, very fast method of doing things. Sometimes it will be a little rough. Um, it will not capture all the pixels perfectly and make smooth them out, but it is very time efficient. Um, so what it'll do is, you can see now, the lines are very smooth. You don't get that pixel anymore, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's pretty much a vector image file now. Uh, you'll notice that there are these some dots here. It's because uh, I didn't bother deleting them uh, in Photoshop, uh, but you can do that on your own. Um, I'm just showing you a quick tutorial here, and what you want to do is you want to save this uh, as uh, some search companies will request some kind of file type. You just gotta play it to their file type. So EPS is what the uh, uh, was what the shirt companies asked for, and I saved it as an EPS file. Um, yeah, just, okay, whatever. And what you might want to do is you want to check after you've saved it. Uh, whether it did smooth out in the post-processing period. Okay, so let's go to our pen, uh, and it should result in the same thing. Uh, you go to object. Sorry, you got to click on click on the guy, uh, or click on the picture. Go to object, um, live trace, make and expand. Chasing will yep to continue. Yeah and you've got the same thing lines are all smoothed out remember what I showed you before uh, and then this is what it looks like after very smooth lines this is what the shirt companies want um, and you can tell you, you know this is what I drew in pen this is what I drew in marker um, you get almost the same result I'm just showing you that uh, with with the pen um, you can get a lot more accuracy because a, a pen is sharper and finer than a marker uh, so you can get in details like these lines that I've drawn here. Uh, with the marker, it's thicker, so it's harder to get that fine detail as the uh, the robot lines. Um, but it does stand out better when you scan the image. So really, um, it's it's more of an experimental kind of thing. You just gotta play with it and see what works best for you. Uh, my advice is, um, if you can use a pen, uh, if you can use like a ball pen, use it because you will get finer points. But sometimes. Uh, pen lines do not show up in the scan, so you might have to use marker to make that really stand out. Um, I'm just going to save this as an EPS file here, um, and that should be it. These are good to send to a t-shirt company. Um, I hope this is this tutorial was helpful. It took me a long time to learn this. Like you know, as easy as it sounds, uh, I didn't know about this uh, until maybe you know the month of uh, maybe May or June, you know, which is pretty tight when you consider when you have to order the shirts and order the uh, uh, the water bottles and such. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope this helps you and I hope this helps future coordinators, you know, of future science orientation. And uh, yeah, just really uh, good luck, have fun. You know, this is a really good uh, fun process for me. I, I use this process too, even after orientation week, you know, I uh, I do do some like hand drawn stuff. And I like to scan and I like to uh, vectorize these. So this is not something that you can just use primarily for orientation. This is stuff you can use, you know, as as a hobby. Um, yeah, I hope you found this useful, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you.